A good Sunday morning to you. This is Pastor Jones here at Valley Assembly of God here in Hagerstown, Maryland. Welcoming you to our Sunday morning service. And I uh, hope you brought your Bibles. Uh, we're going to minister to you the Word of God. Jesus said, you know the truth. The truth will set you free. And that's what we do here every time we gather together. We're not here to entertain you. We're not here to serve you some specialized beverage. We are here to minister you the truth and uh, in, in hopes that you will draw closer to God. If you don't have a relationship with the Lord, I pray you will have one before we conclude this uh, YouTube today. Uh, let me just thank you for your um, giving. Thank you for your attendance. Thank you for tuning into these YouTubes. And it is our desire to be nothing less than a blessing to you and a tool in God's hands uh, to help you and encourage you at such a time as this. Take your Bibles in hand with me, if you would, please. Uh, to the first book of Kings, 17th chapter. I want to begin to read at the 13th verse of Scripture. The Bible said, and Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after that, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither the cruise of oil fail according to to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. I want to talk to you this morning about preparing for a miracle. And I know that there are those under the sound of my voice today that need a miracle in their life, need a miracle in their family, need a miracle with their finances, need a miracle relative to their walk with God. This message today is for you. What's the definition of a miracle? That which goes beyond the natural workings of man and nature. That, my friend, really is a picture of the Christian life on a day-by-day -day basis. To live the Christian life. To live in the, the confines of God's word. To walk before the Lord. A walk that is pleasing to God. It really is a miraculous, spirit-inspired walk. This morning, for a few moments, I want to talk to you about preparing for a miracle. Let's pray before we get into it. Heavenly Father, thank you for the precious word of God uh, this morning. I pray, Lord, let it leap from the page. Let it come alive to us. Let it be that which is exactly we have need of today. May you anoint your word and your messenger now, God. Speak to every heart in life. And Father, we thank you ahead of time. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. The first thing I want to talk to you this morning about is the need, the need of a miracle. I want to show you several incidents in the Bible where the need was apparent, and I guess you need to recognize the need before you're going to ever believe God to work that miracle. The first one is the widow and her son, of which I just read a portion of the passage here in 1 Kings 17. A widow and her son that are on the verge of starvation, drought, Famine, starvation was the landscape of which they were living in. It is the spiritual scene of which we are living in today. Spiritually speaking, I'm not talking about in some third world country. I'm talking about in America. Drought, famine, and starvation, spiritually speaking, is what is taking over the land. It reminds you of what we see at the ho in our homes, the shop, the office, the school, everywhere we turn, we see this devastation. Is there a need? Absolutely. A need to really know who the true God is. We see this in 1 Kings 18 when Elijah stands before the household of Israel. Those people that drifted from God. They have lived in disobedience to the Lord. And now Elijah stands before them. 
You know what those people were then, just like they are today? They know about all kinds of things, everything but God. That's today. Ever learning. We're so smart, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. There was a need at that moment in time on Mount Carmel for a miracle. What about in John, the second chapter, when Jesus was at the wedding feast and they ran out of wine? You know what? That's a good picture of life. The things of this life, they run out. They come to a conclusion, to an end. Pleasures, enjoyments, our physical and mental abilities. Life itself concludes. We need the heavenly, eternal wine to invigorate and renew us today. We need a miracle. The 120 that gathered in the upper room, they needed power to spread the gospel. Acts the second chapter. There was a world to reach. There were a people to impact. Sinners so calloused. The world's glitter and glamour attracting the world into it like a moth to the fire. The onslaught of hell. And tragically, spineless and watered down churches that are not preaching the gospel and winning souls and touching lives. Oh, how we need Holy Ghost power today. Maybe our greatest need, the miracle that we need today. Recognizing your need, my friends, is the first step to a miracle. The second thing I want you to see is this. The ministry of the word of God, because the Bible says in Romans 10 and 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We go back to these same illustrations we gave you just a moment ago. We see Elijah speaking and conveying what seems to be an impossible request to the widow with this assurance. Fear not. He didn't present to her charts and graphs and studies as proof. All she had was the word of the prophet to stand on. That if she provided him a, a, a cold drink and a cake, that somehow, some way, by putting the prophet, oh, well, well, let me go a little farther, by putting God first, somehow, some way, she was laying the groundwork for a miracle to be worked for her need to be met. On Mount Carmel, Elijah speaks a challenge to the household of Israel. How long will you halt between two opinions? If God be God, serve God. If Baal be God, serve Baal. May I convey to you the same. The God that forgives, that cleanses of sin, that imparts eternal life, that gives you joy and peace, that gives you something to live for, and yes, to die for. Serve that God. Because of all these other things you're running after does not meet those needs, it's not going to meet the need in the end as well. Only God can meet those needs. My friends, serve that God. At the wedding feast, Jesus gives words of instruction for the servants to follow. Fill six water pots with water. They needed wine, not water. It seemed foolish, but you know what? They hastened to the words of Jesus. Sometimes the things that God asks of you and I in the natural seems foolish. To live this Christian life. To go to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, oh my goodness. You go back Sunday night? Yes, we do when the COVID's not going on. We have a prayer meeting on Monday. We come back in the middle of the week on Wednesday for midweek Bible study for our youth group and children's ministries. We gather Sunday morning at 9 o'clock for Sunday school when this COVID's not going on. 
filling the building up with people with Bibles in hand, hungry for the things of God, bringing your tithes and offerings in, helping to forward the kingdom. Let me tell you something. All those things in the eyes of the world are foolishness. But in God's eyes, the miraculous, the miraculous, it goes against everything of which the world seems to know what is right and wrong. To the disciples, Christ gave the command to tarry in Jerusalem until they would be endued with power from on high. Why? And all that these men and women had seen and all that they had experienced and all that they had heard and done Weren't they ready to launch forth and to spread the gospel to the world? No, they weren't. They needed the endowment, the power from above that only comes by the Holy Spirit. In spite of the fact of all the experience they had under their belt, all that seemed to go against human reasoning, you know what they did? They went they obeyed, and they tarried. What has God been speaking to you this morning? The word says the willing and the obedient will eat the fat of the land. Obedience always precedes the miracle working power of God. In other words, you cannot live in disobedience to the Lord and then expect God to work a miracle. It's the obedient individual and whom God responds to and puts into motion the needed miracle. The hearing and the obeying of God's word lays the groundwork, my friend. And then we see the preparation. The widow puts Elijah first. Ahead of herself, ahead of her son, well, isn't it the message of the Bible? More blessed to give than to receive. Putting God first always sows the seeds of a miracle. Seek ye first the kingdom, and then all these other things will be added unto you. Elijah builds an altar, and he prays. But before he prays, so that fire to fall, Four barrels of water three times are dumped over this offering and, and altar, guaranteeing that if fire falls and burns this sacrifice, it has to be from God. The servants at the wedding feast, they go with those pots and fetch the water, just as Jesus had instructed them. Just simple obedience. They didn't know all the, the workings of God and how it was all going to come to pass. They just obeyed. You ever seen a small child who's been given some instructions by their parent and they stand in front of mom or dad and say, why? Why? Like, like the child needs an explanation for what the parent is asking. Too many times in our lives as Christians, God is asking something of us, and at that moment in time, he's not wanting to give you an explanation. He just wants you to obey. The disciples, they went, they tarried, they prayed, and they sought God for 10 days. You see, Instant obedience does not necessarily mean instant answers. Sometimes there's a length of time that spans between the obedient act and the answer to that prayer, or that miracle to be worked. All that you and I have to worry about is obeying God, and God will take care of the rest. Which brings me to number four here, the miracle itself. Or, let me subtitle it. Does it, in the long run, pay to serve God? 
Well, let me ask you that when you are moments from eternity and heaven awaits you, is it, did, did it pay to serve God? Absolutely. Let me ask the man or the woman moments from death that does not know God, nor will they surrender to God. Did it pay not to serve the Lord as your moments away from hell? Oh, folks, serve God and be obedient today and prepare for that heavenly home. The widow here, her oil and flour did not run out until the famine was over. Bible scholars say there was about two years' time. God somehow, some way, allowed the meal to still be in the bottom of the barrel and the oil to flow from that flask. God rained fire upon a soggy altar and offering. What was the response? What happened? The people of God begin to cry out, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. Jesus turned the water into wine. A double strength grape juice, which was the finest drink of that moment. Most would have put the best out to start with. But now the best has been produced by the touch of God. The wine from heaven, from the hands of Christ, is always superior. The world only has substitutes. And you know, like I do, substitutes are never the same. The disciples, they received the Holy Spirit and power with fire. And you know what they did? They turned the world upside down. Everywhere they went, they spread the gospel. Notice the sermon results of the day of Pentecost. Thousands were saved. There was a steadfastness in the word of God. Fellowship, prayers, fear, signs, wonders, one accord, praise, soul saved. Let me ask you something. Isn't that what we need today? Isn't that what we need today in our churches? Genuine conversions. Genuine infillings with the Holy Spirit. People that live it and are different than this world in which we live. Let's recognize the need this morning. Let's heed the word of God. Let's prepare. And friends, let's receive. A miracle from God's hands. Let's see ourselves right with God. What a great miracle that would be. Relatives and friends getting saved. Healings wrought. Finances helped. All sorts of needs being met. Where? At the feet of Jesus who is our miracle worker. No man's the miracle worker. No. Elijah, if he was here, he would not say he was the miracle worker. No, no. It was God. We know it's Jesus. You've recognized your need. That's why you're viewing this YouTube this morning. That's why you're in the house of God this morning. The word has been preached to you. The Holy Spirit has prepared your heart. You feel that tug. You feel that touch of God upon you. If you'll make your way to God this morning, he can work that needed miracle in your heart and life right now. I pray that you'll follow the steps and that that miracle that you need in your life today will be met in Jesus Christ. Bow your heads with me, please. Heavenly Father, we're thankful that we serve a miracle-working God. Lord, somebody under the sound of my voice today needs a miracle. Lord, they've not escaped your, your uh, sight. You see them. You feel their need. Your heart goes out to them. Lord, if they would only recognize their need of that miracle today, if they would only hearken to your word, if they would only be obedient to the word, Lord, the miracle will unfold right before their eyes. 
Father, I pray whatever we have need of today, as we sit before you, stand before you, kneel before you, Father, we ask you to come in Jesus' name and to work that miracle. If it's someone that needs salvation, may you save their soul right now as they ask you into their heart and life, and may you help them to live for you from this day forward. And they need a physical miracle in their bodies. They need a healing touch. The doctors have said they can do no more. But Lord, that does not limit you. Touch them, I pray, right now. Lord, to that family that's being pinched financially, I pray extend your touch to them. Work the miracle, God, to stretch their dollars and to meet their needs. Lord, whatever the need is this morning, Perhaps that need is so large, it's going to take a miracle to work it out. Father, may you undertake in their behalf, we pray. Father, we ask you this morning, as we get ready to move on through the rest of the day, go before us in the new week ahead. And may we see your miracle, wonder-working hand in our hearts and lives every day. Because to live the life, to be the Christian, the man of God, the woman of God, Lord, it really is a miraculous life. And I pray, Lord, you'll help us to live it out before others. Others will ask, what is the reason of our hope? And we'll be able to tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ. Keep us in your safekeeping. Meet every need. And Father, we thank and praise you for it all. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining with us today. Remember, we serve a miracle-working God. Recognize the need of it, hearken to God's word, be obedient, and believe me, the same God that worked the miracles of yesterday will work them today in your heart and life as well. Have a great day in God. God bless. We'll see you soon.